the first time, a team of American and European scientists have successfully grown human eggs in a lab. Researchers at the University of Edinburgh believe their breakthrough will preserve the fertility of young women who've undergone cancer treatment, but more work is still required before the process can be clinically used. For more on this, our guest is Dr. Jennifer Kulp Makarov. She's an OBGYN and infertility specialist. Thanks for joining us. Um, okay, first, um, walk us through exactly what we're talking about here, growing eggs outside of the womb to maturity. That's never been done before until now. Right, okay, so, well, part of it's been done before. So actually, um, in the lab where I work in Columbus Circle at New Hope Fertility Center, uh, we take eggs and women who are ovulating and we can grow them from an immature stage to um, a mature stage where they can then be fertilized. But um, we can't do this for young women um, who are not ovulating. So that's really the breakthrough here is that we can take um, some tissue from their ovary and then grow eggs from this tissue, whereas before we, we weren't able to help these young women. How complicated is it? What are the steps that are needed? What breakthrough kind of had to happen? So the very early stages, being able to grow from a piece of tissue, that's the real breakthrough. So being able to like, carefully harvest that tissue, which uh, requires a surgery, mm -hmm. and then taking that tissue in the lab. And the, you know, um, these eggs are very delicate. They can't be open in the air. They're in um, small incubators. So we keep them in small incubators and then um, s surround them with this uh, very um, special fluid that changes as they develop. Um, but the real breakthrough is taking it from the tissue from women. So we had to l allow the body to do some of the initial um, maturation for us up until this stage, and this is taking eggs at a much earlier stage than we've ever how, done it. How many eggs are they taking to get some that are viable? So when you take a strip of ovarian tissue, there's thousands of eggs in that tissue. So um, we're not even like counting all those eggs. In, in a strip of tissue, yes, thousands of eggs, and then um, maturing only a small portion of those. Although in the end, we really only need one egg for a baby. So as long as we get but one you, good you one, you need a lot happy. of eggs to give it a shot. The, yes, um, that's true. I, I understand yes. they haven't fertilized any of these eggs yet. Though, that's right? true. So that's we don't true. know if that process will work or if these eggs are mature enough to accept that. That's true. I mean, all indicators are that they are they're getting them to the stage right before fertilization, and um, it's really regulation that's prevented the fertilization. So all evidence points to that we will be able to, although correct, we have not yet to really um, because um, not allowed to. Uh, and and would this process theoretically be used for women who want to get pregnant for their own eggs? Is that the idea here? Really, this is for um, cancer patients, say women who are not ovulating on their own. Mm -hmm. IVF is um, such, um, works so well these days. We have hugely high success rates with traditional um, IVF treatments. So really, this would be for someone who is not producing their own eggs. So say for young women who are facing cancer, that, that's really the population. Um, Potentially for older women who have also stopped ovulating, that may be um, a second population who this could help. But really, right now, for younger women who are not ovulating pre 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 puberty, how do you um, yes. how do you treat that traditionally right now? Right now, we can't offer them a lot. You know, right now we can't offer them a lot. So unfortunately, these young girls who are um, going through chemotherapy that um, affects their ovaries. Um, they're not able to have children at this time. And, and, and is it the is it the prepubescent or, um, yes, exactly. girls that this affects the That's most? Exactly, exactly. Because right now, um, until this um, uh, technology was developed, we really couldn't harvest those eggs, and this gives us uh, potentially the ability to do that. And so, so uh, women, um, older women who are ovulating and go through cancer treatments, you are able to then harvest their eggs without this? Yes, correct? we're able to harvest um, one group of eggs. So they, for one, we can harvest a limited number of eggs. Mm -hmm. This potentially, we could um, ha you know, save more eggs for them. So, th so that could benefit once them. You, once you mature the eggs, how long will they last? If you're talking about girls who are 12, 13 years old, they may not want them for 20 years. That's true, yes. Um, right now, so there's two ways. They could freeze the tissue right when it gets out and mature the eggs only once they want to be used, mm -hmm. but once they want to go ahead and use those eggs. Or we have a lot of experience freezing eggs at this point where we're very good at, once the eggs are mature, freezing them. And those eggs, once they're frozen, can last many years. Um, so, and that technology is very good. How expensive is this process, or do you think it will be? Yes, hopefully, you know, um, I think a lot of um, health insurances are willing to cover when it's for cancer. So is is not something elective that these young girls are choosing to do, but this is because they have cancer or some mm -hmm. other treatment like that. So a lot of times, um, insurance will pick up part of the um, 
okay. expense oh. of that. Yes. Um, have the cancer treatments gotten any better to try to avoid sterilization? I think not at this point. I think, you know, they're really focused on curing the cancer mm -hmm. and they almost have uh, blindfolds on where they're not thinking about fertility. And when I ask cancer patients later on who have been cured of their cancer, you know, some of their regrets, it's that they didn't address their fertility ahead of time because uh, we just are so, are you know, such focused on, on just so the focused disease. on the cancer. It's such a huge, uh, huge thing to get diagnosed with cancer and it's all you can think mm -hmm. about. But later on, they found this a big regret of cancer patients that, that how, was not addressed. How quickly can you di diagnose sterilization after? after cancer treatment ends? Um, it, within a few months, usually, you can, you can, you have indicators of it, huh. definitely. Um, so basically, what's the timeline here, do you think, before we may start seeing this um, being performed? So I think it will take a few years to pass through the regulations. I think that's the um, biggest step before um, seeing this performed. Um, but uh, you know, I would think uh, in a matter of a few years, I would, you know, it's something um, I could see coming in um, to clinical practice relatively quickly. Okay, Dr. Jennifer Kulp Makarov with the New Hope Family Center. Fertility Center, yes. Fertility Thank Center. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming down here. Thank you so much for having me.